Hello everybody, it's Farm Sim Guy here. Hope you're all doing well. We're here today to have a quick look at Auto Drive. This is very much a beginner's look at Auto Drive, just to get you started. I know um, if you're anything like me, when you first looked at Courseplay and when you first look at Auto Drive, you see all the icons, you do not have a clue what you're doing, and it can be a little bit daunting. Well, Hopefully, I'm going to be able to dispel that with this today. Um, like I said, though, we're going to we're going to look at the basics. We're going to look at just getting you off the ground and getting you comfortable with it. After that, you can go and experiment and play around with things. But for us to get just just started with you, so that you're uh, not feeling as worried about using it in the future. So, with that in mind, we're not going to cover all of the elements that uh, you can see there in the auto drive menu. We're just going to cover two or three to get you started. So, without further ado let's jump into it uh, we've got ourselves a rather nice Fent uh, 1000 tractor here the custom modding version of it um, great tractor and as you can see we can't access that auto drive menu even though it's sitting there in a box I can't get at it so the first thing you need to be able to do is press your middle mouse button now that can be a button that is your scroll wheel or you may have a, a middle mouse button um, so just click on that you'll see a cursor appears uh, we're not panning around the tractor anymore, but we can now access the auto drive menu. So with that in mind, um, we can start to edit a course. Now there are no courses here at the moment. Uh, it is exactly uh, as it is, the mod test map, uh, with nothing additional added to it. So what we need to do here is click on this caution triangle in the bottom corner. It's greyed out at the moment. The moment you know you're in edit mode, it turns red. And it brings up a few other options here as well. Uh, not to worry, we'll tell you what those are in a second. But um, we're in edit mode now, so basically we can start to record a course. Now we're currently at the shop. I've pressed the middle mouse button again there just so I can pan around the tractor. Um, so what I'm going to do here, we're going to go straight in. We're in edit mode. I'm going to hit the record button. Uh, I'm going to pull forward slightly. There we go, and you see there we've created a first couple of paths of a course. Now, when you originally open Auto Drive, let's go to the second menu here. I hit the cog on the uh, Auto Drive menu there to bring up the uh, settings menu. Um, when you first start Auto Drive, you'll probably find that the lines are underneath the tractor like that. Now, I that's fine if you like that. For me, I like the fact that I can see the lines appearing as I create them. So what I tend to do is have the line height set to above tractor. Now I hit apply. Now you see they've disappeared again here. We basically just need to go back into edit mode for them to appear again. And because we're still recording, it is remembering what point we are on the course. Now you can see as well on the green line there is an arrow. That tells you the direction of the course you've created. Um, We'll go into it in further episodes, but you can create two-way courses in the future as well. Um, so we'll come back and talk about that another time. But for today, just remember that when you're in edit mode and you hit the record button, anything you do, any motion that you have in the tractor will be recorded as part of the course. You'll also see that red line in front of the dots as well. That basically tells you um, the point at which the tractor is, and that will be your point for recording the next course point and so on and so forth and you'll see that as we move forward so we're recording at the moment um, we've got a couple of points here um, but I want to record this as a location as well so what I want to do here is uh, this third button along the top here so you've got your record for your course you've got save which we'll come on to in a little while and you've got this element here which is called the target point now what I want to do here I want to click on the target point and it says insert target name. So what I'm going to do is call this shop because that's where we are. I'm going to hit the create button. And what that does is that puts an icon above the last marker and it gives it the name shop. So there we go. Um, still in record mode. Um, as you can see, I'm clicking uh, every now and again between using the menu and rotating around the tractor. Uh, because we're still in record mode, you can switch back out now, and we're going to create a very simple course. We're going to run down to the silo there, and we're going to turn around, and we're going to come back. So as you see, as we drive, it's creating course markers. 
Now what I want to do here, let's just do a, a loop around here like this and line ourselves back up onto the road. There we go, and you can go as fast or as slow as you like to make sure you get your marker points working. Now you can see as we're driving, this red line on the tractor is always jumping to the basically the closest marker to the tractor. And why why that does that, it autoplay is always working out where the course is and where the tractor is in, in relation to the course. So in this instance, it will always look for the nearest marker point. So in the future, when you want to join a course, uh, it will look for that marker and it will send the tractor to that marker as a start point. And I'll demonstrate that in a little minute. Uh, but we'll close off this course now. So we're going to come around here. I'm going to loop around again. And basically what you want to do is you want to be creating a loop so the tractor can go around that entire circuit and back to where it started. So there we go. Now you can see we're very close to being finished here, but those two aren't joined up. So uh, in order to make this course work, you have to join the elements up. So all we need to do here, again, middle mouse button, so we get our cursor up. You select this uh, target marker here, and you click on the next one. And as you can see, it joins a line between the two, and you have a very simple one-way course. Now at this juncture we probably want to add in a second point or we're just going to do loops around to the shop for days on end. So what we want to do now, we go in here, we turn off record mode so we're not recording anymore which means then we can we can move about freely uh, and like I said before you see there's that red line it doesn't matter if you're on the course or not it's always looking for the closest point. Now what I might put here is a second point just here let's call it here um, and whichever point we're closest to let's say this one let's call this point here shed so again we'll go into our targets we'll hit target name name and we'll go shed create and there we go we have a second point now you can drive now back to the shop or to the shed from the shop or any variant of those and the easiest way to do that is just to click on that drop down menu then you can see there's our two points so for ease let's go to shop and we hit this button here which is the stop go button and as you can see the tractor starts moving around the course quite happily and he will run all the way back to the shop where he will stop and then we can send it back to the shed and then we can send it back to the shop and we can keep doing that to our heart's content And if you can do that, you have mastered your very first auto drive course. Simple, right? That wasn't too bad at all. Now, of course, um, you don't necessarily want to see this course all the time. It's very handy to do when you're editing courses, but we don't want to see it all the time. And the only the easiest way to get rid of that is just to click on uh, edit mode again. To switch it off and the course disappears now it is still there of course there it is but we don't want to see it the whole time but now with your drop down you can click shed you can click load shed and the tractor just gets on with it so very handy very handy indeed Okay, we're going to grab another tractor here, um, just to show you that if you grab another tractor uh, and kick the edit mode, the course still appears for that tractor. So everything you create can be used in any tractor, it's not like it's dedicated to that tractor, not like course play, when you set up a course on course play it's dedicated to that tractor. The auto drive courses are for every vehicle on the map, should you want to use them. Now, what I want to do here, before we go too much further with this, I'm going to move this Fent out of the way, because he's sitting on the course, and that will cause some issues potentially later on, um, because other tractors won't be able to get past him. So let's park him there. Let's get back into our little John Deere here. Now, what I want to do here, we've got a silo there, and we know there's wheat in that silo. So what we want to do now is we want to create a little addition to our course. Now I'm driving around here 
nothing to do with the course that we're on but basically I want to be able to collect some grain in this trailer and I want to unload it somewhere in fact I'm going to unload it there at that bakery so what I'm going to do now I'm going to find a point at which on the existing course that I, I like I think this one looks pretty good and I'm going to create a new bit of course so we know that uh, with a line from the tractor connected to that dot if we create a new element of course we start recording now it's going to take the next recording point from that one so let me just demonstrate that for you so you know what I'm talking about if I hit record now it's created a new point here and it's joined it to this part of the old course now what I want to do is I want to drive around to here and I want to drive under our silo and I want to stop here now let's call that point there let's roll forward a little bit further let's call that point there silo unload create that point and now we want to get back to our other course as well we've got to close this loop off now it looks like we're going to have to drive around the back of the sheds but we can do that uh, we can pretty much go wherever we like so we will drive around here we will turn around here uh, obviously bearing in mind you've got trailers on you've got big articulated lorries if you want to create course for those to make sure you put enough of a turn on those to make sure that they uh, can make turns and not crash into things now we got to this point here you can see there's our old course and there's our new element of course I'm going to hit my middle mouse button and we're going to do exactly what we did last time to close off the first course and we're going to click on one point and we're going to click on a point on the old course and you can see it's joined it up very neatly and now our tractor has joined back up with the course so we've added a whole new element to the course there with a new waypoint that loops it around and somebody once said to me like an auto drive to a uh, like a railway track it works very similar to that um, now you'll see actually I've driven forward here and I've added in one two three four elements that I don't really want there so what I'm going to do I'm going to reverse back slightly now you can see here um, I'm connected to that last dot there I can go to the one two three fourth button along here if I click on that it removes that point um, now I'm going to drive around here because I've got a concertina trailer see I'm doing it again now stop recording there you go I just want to demonstrate this is, happens all the time so don't worry now what we want to do to remove those points the easiest way to do that is make sure your tractor is connected to the one you want to get rid of and click on that the fourth button in a row and again and again and again and again and again just get rid of those points and it's a good tip actually and I think we all do it quite regularly creating auto drive courses is um, forgetting to turn the record button off now that's got rid of those rogue elements and we've got our clean course back so with that in mind we could just drive for ease we could just drive back to the shop so we'll do that and look you can see the tractor working out the closest one to it joining the course and driving back to the shop so here we are arriving back at the shop now we said that we wanted to be able to pick up from our silo unload over there and drop it off at the bakery over there now to be able to do that we need to create another element to the course now what I'm going to do I'm going to pull forward slightly here as you can see we've got the red line connected to the shop dot there so we're happy with that as an element uh, to start from we're going to click our middle mouse button so we can access the menu we're going to hit the record button and we are going to drive and we're going to run down to here and we're going to perform a turn when we get to here and we're going to turn around here and we are going to drive over here like so stop here as you can see it'll alert comes up there 
and we're going to call this point, in fact we'll roll forward till we get a new one, there we go, we're going to call that point Bakery. Now, you'll see here that we've, we're quite far forward, um, now that's not an issue, um, because actually what will happen is auto driver will sense when it's over the unload point and will stop early, even if your point runs past that. Now, what we want to do here is join this bakery course back up to the main course. We're still recording, as you can see from the menu there, the red dot is there. So basically we're going to drive forward again and we're going to pull back onto the road. And at some point we will join back up with our course. Um, now I'm going to keep driving forward here and I'm going to stop probably here, there we go. And you can see all we need to do now, again middle mouse button, is connect this up to another line on our course. There we go. So we've connected back up now. So that is another complete course and we can make that work. Now one thing you can also do, you don't need to be here with your tractor at this point, you can join two courses uh, points up. So for example now we don't want to always loop through the shop to go to the bakery. So I can click on that button there and I can click on let's say that one there and that's created a line that runs all the way along the road and will bypass the shop. So again we start to make some uh, more customizations to our course as we go on and uh, yeah it's proving to be quite successful. Now let's do a test shall we? Uh, we obviously already loaded up the trailer um, so what we want to do now is uh, head to the bakery to unload it. So let's hit the go button and see what happens. And it will also be an interesting test to see if it skips out the loop around the shop now and goes straight on. So again it's not gone round the silo unload point as well, it's looking for the fastest possible route. So it's gone past the shed, it's gone the, through this loop. Now if we've done this properly, this will shoot straight along the road, avoid the shop, and it has, fantastic, and it will go through this loop, and it will unload. For some reason it slowed down a little bit there, it's opened up the, uh, the trailer already, I think it's because it's close enough that it senses it. It's going to loop around here now, get lined up. And there he goes, he's tipping. So like I said just earlier there, it sensed the unload point prior to the bakery point. Um, and he's unloading at the appropriate spot. So that is that trailer unloaded. Now one of the course option you've got here, and it's the last thing I'll show you in this video because I think there's enough there for you to take in for now, is this, um, if you click on the second button, along here. Uh, this option here to un load up at a certain point, unload at a certain point and choose a specific crop that you want to uh, take. Um, we are going to we're going to leave it on wheat because we know we've got wheat in our silo over there. So basically I'm going to send this tractor to the silo unload point and we're going to unload him at the bakery and we're going to do that with wheat. Um, and we're going to hit the go button here. Now I'm going to turn off the edit menu here so it looks as authentic as possible but basically he's going to drive along the road here he's going to pull under the silo if we've got all this as expected. Yes, there he goes, turning off as he gets close, yep, the cover comes off he's going to keep pulling forward until there are pipe is over the trailer, there it goes, loading up. Once that's full he'll pull away, he'll cover up the trailer again. Now he's going to loop round the back of the shed here, he's going to join back onto the main course. We will skip the shop route as we've said before, we don't need to go via the shop now because we can go straight on along the road. I'm going to head down here to the bakery. 
it's already uncovered I think uh, because he senses the unload point on the other side of the road he's going to loop around here any second now unload and then he's going to go back to the silo and he's going to keep doing that until either you tell him to stop or until the silo runs out of wheat but it's a very very handy thing to have if you have a big grain harvest uh, you've got silos full but you're still combining or you're doing other jobs and you don't have time to unload your silo you can automate that whole thing so you don't have to worry about it but there he is arriving at the bakery unloading the trailer and the moment that's unloaded he will then head back to the silo and like I said he will just keep doing that until you tell him to stop or switch it off um, there we go I'll let that shut I do love that side door animation actually but there we go closed now he will roll forward any second now he usually waits just a little minute to gather his thoughts before rolling forward there we go and heading back to the silo now you can get really really technical with this stuff if you haven't already seen my video on the auto drive course for flint hills um it's an absolute brilliant uh, it's a masterpiece to be honest uh, and well worth going to watch that video so you can see the sort of things that you can start to get built into auto drive as you get more and more confident but i hope there's enough there if you were nervous about auto drive before that you're not now um, there is a little bit of trial and error. I think I proved that as well in this vid. Uh, it doesn't always go to plan. Um, usually user error. Uh, certainly it is on my part. But just keep remembering there are ways to remove elements um, and, and you've got to join your courses up. The, the two key things I would say to remember are uh, make sure you create uh, targets or points to stop at on your courses and make sure you always join your courses up. But there you go, uh, the very, very, very basics of auto drive. I hope that's helpful. And uh, any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm sure we'll be doing a few other videos on auto drive as we get a little bit more accustomed to it. But until then, from me for now, the Farm Sim Guy, thank you very, very much for watching, and I will see you all again very soon. Bye for now.